Hello, and welcome to a bonus episode of the Physique Development Podcast. This show is a question and answer based show where we take questions we have been asked by our listeners and answer them through our industry experience as coaches and from our own professional perspectives. But today we'll be doing things a little bit differently. The podcast is normally the three co owners, Alex, Austin, and Sue, but as a company, we have other coaches on staff. Today, I, Coach Sue, am joined by Charlotte Jones. Hi, everyone. You'll be hearing from Charlotte, getting to know who she is, and being able to learn a little bit more on why she's on staff for physique development. We're going to dive into a semester that she took off, how that really formed who she was and what she decided to do, as well as being able to dive into an educational topic. Because as I've talked about, we want to always make sure that this is still education-based, even if we do bring in some fun components here. So um, this is going to be one of four installments as we go through each PD coach. Um, So without further ado we're going to go ahead and hear from Charlotte a little bit. So Charlotte, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit of a synopsis of who you are, and then we'll dive into the semester you took off. Yeah, absolutely. So as Sue mentioned, my name is Charlotte. I um, got into the fitness industry about four years ago here and have been kind of just evolving and growing within that ever since. And my journey has had, you know, its fair share of ups and downs, as I'm sure many of us have. Um, But yeah, I started coaching uh, about two years ago now. And since then have, again, you know, really started to develop my own um, kind of approach within things and now started working with physique development here back in August and have been growing with them since. And I'm just very excited to uh, yeah, be here today, talk a little bit about um, my background within the fitness and um, beyond, and then be able to talk about some more specific topics. So yeah, that's a little very, very brief summary about <laughs> me. Um, and now kind of just tangent into semester off. Well, I'd love for you to tell them more about who you are as a person. So why don't you tell me about I mean, your pets, where you graduated college, where you live currently, because right. um, this could be someone's first time knowing who the crap Charlotte is. That's so we want to be able to tell them a little bit about you. Yeah, absolutely. So I am 24, just turned 24 last no, two weeks ago now. I currently live in Columbus, Ohio. I have a an adorable little kitten named Phoenix. We call her Miss Kitten, however. And then we also have a um, pup named Pablo. I graduated from Ohio State University back in the spring with a degree in sociology and business. Um, and yeah, again, mostly I worked as a bartender for a couple years during my undergraduate experience, um, have a very large passion for coffee, I absolutely love um, just reading, spending time with family, friends, um, and just, yeah, really focusing on, you know, education, growing ourselves and um, just, yeah. A lot of that sort of thing. (laughs) I mean, there's a person behind the educator and the coach, and I think it's important to dive into that. So um, we'll go ahead and talk about the semester that you took off and kind of what that looked like for your personal journey, how that shaped you, um, and being able to just know how you came from that point to where you are now um, and getting your CPT and getting into coaching. Yeah, absolutely. So as Sue mentioned, I took my fall semester off my junior year of college. And this was after a spring semester where um, I think that, you know, freshman year of college, everything is very new. Everything is very exciting. Um, By the time you get to your sophomore year, a little bit of that excitement kind of wears off um, and you start to kind of be faced with, okay, What do I really, you know, where do I want to go with things? Who do I want to become? Where do all of these different pieces of my, you know, college identity, whether it be school, sorority, fitness, friends, all of those pieces, you really start to examine those pieces and kind of start to create that you know, definition of life for yourself and um, start to really find yourself, I think. So that was kind of where I found myself my sophomore year. I kind of found myself in a position where everything around me kind of felt... I don't necessarily want to say toxic because it had some certain aspects of it. (laughs) Yeah, certain aspects of it were. I mean, it did also have some positive things too. So I don't want to make full, you know, blanket statements about things necessarily, but it definitely had some aspects with things that definitely didn't serve me. Um, And in the summer, I sat down with my mom and I was like, I. I, I hate my degree program. I, I'm not comfortable with, you know, my situation in the fall. Things kind of feel a little bit weird. So, you know, how would how would you feel if I took a semester off? And I thank the lucky stars every day <laughs> that my parents were wholeheartedly very supportive of me taking the semester off to 
really be able to kind of find what I needed to do for me. And at this time, I was dealing with an eating disorder at the same time, which was kind of a um, background motivating force in wanting to take some time off to heal myself in multiple facets. So like I talked about, you know, having different pieces of my life that weren't serving me, but also having different habits, different um, coping mechanisms, different routines and things on a daily basis that really weren't serving me in a very serious health facet as well. Um, so being able to kind of attack that head on. So I decided that the most intelligent thing for me to do was to really be able to focus on myself without academics in the picture. And that involved working full time as a uh, server and what ultimately became a bartender, um, still continuing to you know study and educate myself in other facets, but also really figuring out, okay, where do I want to go with my life? So um, somewhere in that time, I had been you know, in the gym consistently up until then. But around that time is when I really kind of found my way into the weight room. And I really started to discover, you know, other women who were just as strong and just as powerful um, doing this, you know, side of fitness and uh, this part of fitness that I hadn't really been exposed to before that didn't really, uh, that it kind of, I guess it scared me. Um, But I found these, I found people kind of uh, in this, in this more, holistic, I don't know, I don't know if that's necessarily the right word, <laughs> but a different, um, an outlook on fitness that was a lot more, uh, wholesome, healthy mm-hmm. and inclusive and, you know, really was focused on the individual versus, you know, restriction and things like that. So, um, that was kind of where I started to, you know, dive down that rabbit hole. I've started following, you know, Sue and <laughs> a lot of other uh, wonderful individuals on Instagram. And that was where a lot of it began. But during this um, semester off, I was in therapy, um, and I was really focused on, kind of, again, you know, really finding what was going to serve me. So along in that time, I started kind of asking myself, you know, where did certain things in my journey kind of pop up that caused me to take on certain habits or how did certain things uh, in around me kind of influence my identity? So that kind of uh, caused me to pursue sociology as a uh, career, as a school path. Um, and then business on the side of that, I knew that I really did care about business, but um, I was, it wasn't my whole focus with things, but kind of within that journey, I was still very focused on fitness. And I decided that, you know, kind of where I really wanted to go was really helping people in that capacity. So in that spring, uh, after I got back into, I went back to school in the spring and I started studying for my CPT at the same time as I was kind of going through this. Um, I was still healing myself in a lot of ways, but I was feeling a lot more, a lot stronger, a lot more sure of myself. And I what the choices that I had made were now things that I had chosen for myself. I left my sorority at the same time. I walked away from some uh, friendships and relationships that, you know, weren't necessarily the best humans. Um, and eventually got to go back to school with a, a, a head up, my head was straight on, <laughs> basically. Screwed on yeah, straight. Screwed on straight. Thank you. Um, as opposed to kind of feeling like I was looking at a million directions at once. And yeah, so that semester I really think was kind of where I my first inkling for really wanting to help people and really going down that path really um, started and really it's, but it first really started with, you know, finding something that served me as opposed to kind of doing things because I felt like I needed to or because I had to as opposed to uh, for for external purposes. Um, So yeah, that was kind of that semester in a nutshell. I'm happy to kind of elaborate on any of that more in depth as well. Yeah, I absolutely love that. I think that something within coaching and something within finding a coach or even just becoming a coach comes from a place of struggling yourself and getting to a place where you're not struggling as much and just wanting other people to not feel the struggle that you still felt. I know that's what happened for me personally is I I fell in love with fitness and I realized that I didn't have to live by the lowest common denominator. Like I didn't have to feel bad every single day. I didn't have to not know what I was doing every day. I had the power to take control. And once I learned about food because I spent so long not understanding food, it was something where I just felt like I had harnessed all this power that I was like, yeah. freak yeah, what do I do with this? I, I want to <laughs> share that with others. So I think it's really powerful. And especially like, as a college student, there's a lot of college students listening right now. And it, it's hard to make the decision that's not the societal norm. Yeah. Um, and while it is becoming more accepting, whether it's to not go to school or have a different school path, it's still very much so the norm in m- many families, which like you said, very thankful that your family was receptive mm-hmm. and knew what was going to serve you best. But it's something that when it comes to it um, and when it comes to building something, taking the 
route that's not normal is hard. Yeah. And you being able to know I'm in a place that I'm not happy. I'm in a place that it's not serving me. And I know I need to get out. That's huge. And I've seen that within your own clients of you kind of harnessing that power and sharing it. But I just think it's so powerful. And if you even remember what was going through your head at that time of being like, I am going against the grain, but I know it's best for me because you you said I, I, I wasn't very confident. And when I got back, I felt like my head was screwed on straight. I felt more confident. So where did the confidence come from to make the decision that wasn't the norm? Because that's extremely scary to do. Yeah, absolutely. And you're so right that there really is so much power in, you know, discovering that passion for helping others from your own struggles. Um, but as far as, you know, building that confidence for myself, um, I, I, I notice this in clients and I notice, of course, in myself, but when you really start to do the thing that serves you the most is really where I start to see um, and I start to feel that confidence really, you know, that's really where it comes from. When I think when you kind of can feel that you are living more in alignment with yourself, when you are really, you know, it's kind of like when you, when you know, you know. Um, and I mean, they say that about, you know, a million and 12 things. But I think when you find your career path, when you know, you know, or when you find a hobby that you really enjoy, like, you know. And I think that fitness was kind of that thing for me. It was like, I finally have this thing that I know is for me. So it allowed me to show up in the rest of my life um, with confidence and to have confidence in my decision because I ultimately knew that, you know, I got I got weird looks from people when I said that I was taking a semester off. I got people saying, oh, well, you're never going to go back and finish your degree, which is fine. I mean, some people don't. I knew that it was something that I wanted to go back and finish. But, you know, I just had to stand strong in who I was and know that it was what was going to best serve me. So I think that a, re- a lot of that really comes down to, you know, reflection and asking yourself, hey, is this really serving me? And this, this applies to everything. I mean, this applies to your nutrition, your fitness goals, um, the people in your life, your career path, your major, everything everything in your life. Um, So when you can really say to yourself that I know that the road less traveled is the road for me, even if you don't know where that road less traveled is necessarily going to take you, even if you know that that is, you know, the right path that you need to go down, I really think that that is kind of what really starts driving that confidence. And once you can kind of stand true and say, hey, yes, I know this is what I need. Yes, it's scary. Yes, it might be hard. Yes, there I might fall down and maybe even try to take a detour. Um, (laughs) But it's still that's really where that confidence comes from. Yeah. And I think it's something that a little bit of you fake it till you make it where it's like, I'm going to make this huge life altering decision yeah. <laughs> just so I follow through with it. Yeah. Um, and knowing that like your health and your your life and your quality of life was in danger. Mm-hmm. And that's what was your driving force yeah. was like, I don't want to live this way anymore, which I just think is extremely powerful. Um, and it's been great to see you push that, not push it onto clients, but utilize that with clients um, and be able to truly show your passion behind it and show them that their life doesn't have to be the life that they originally planned out for themselves, mm-hmm. which I think is extremely cool. So um, with that, I want to kind of dive into a little bit of once you had the semester off, you went back, you got into fitness, but then what did it look like for getting your CPT? and starting to get into coaching people and what were even what was it even like coaching your first few clients yeah, absolutely. So as I said, I went back to school in the spring, um, started studying for my CPT. And then actually the next fall is where things kind of really started to pick up where I first started training clients, where I started. Um, I got my certification through Ohio State. Um, they had a fantastic program. I attribute so much of my growth as a coach and as a trainer to their program. Um, they do a lot of hands-on learning through our classroom settings, through shadowing other trainers, through uh, different testing process or different uh, tests throughout the learning process to make sure that you are learning and retaining. So I think that that was a, a huge foundational piece in my learning. And I am so grateful to you know a lot of the people who um, actually some of them are now really awesome coaches in the industry, which is super cool. And it was really, it's amazing that I got to lear- learn from them. And now I look back and I'm like, wow, that was so cool. Um, but so I started working at Ohio State in the fall, ended up getting my actual certification um, in December. And then yeah, started working with my first couple of of clients one-on-one for, as I mentioned, we did shadowing hours. So we were working with clients, um, but it was kind of 
you were work you were working with another trainer. So it wasn't you specifically. Of course, uh, depending on the person you were working with, they would either have you you know do a little bit more or do a little bit less. I gratefully got to work with um, someone who's actually a very very good friend of mine to this day, um, and he got me he let me really take the reins with a lot of that. So um, it was definitely something that uh, you you kind of get your certification, and then at least this is my experience. I know everyone's a little bit different, but you kind of get your certification. You're like, okay, I have all the knowledge. And then you go out there and it it's a little bit different in application because every client that you work with, every individual is going to be different. So while you learn the skills through the certification, you work with the uh, the clients in the shadowing program, and then you have to really modify things. So I really had to um, show myself and really, you know, it, it is a little bit fake until you make it, especially at the beginning um, when you really don't have a ton of hands-on experience as you're kind of um, getting your getting your feet wet with things. So it was a lot of, um, you know, asking for help when I needed it. That was, I, I was really grateful to have the support system through Ohio State. Um, having that built in for me, that was a huge blessing. I know that everybody doesn't have that, but I will say firsthand that it was a huge, you know, huge piece in me, I think, becoming successful was having that, you know, foundation of uh, people to lean on, those people to ask questions to. Um, and yeah, so the thing about Ohio State also is that obviously it is a huge university with a very uh, vast, vastly diverse student population from lots of different backgrounds. So it was really cool getting to work with a pretty wide range of clients right off the bat, um, working with some, you know, clients who were just getting into the gym, more beginners, where we were really just focused on, you know, learning basic movement patterns, really just body weight stuff. But then we also had some more advanced clients. But the really cool thing is you kind of got to uh, pick who you wanted to work. You didn't really get to pick who you wanted to work <laughs> with. But as they sent out inquiries, it was kind of, you know, who wants this one? So you kind of got to choose. And um, yeah, it was really special getting to work with a variety of clients and then getting to just really grow with the staff into the spring um, and then starting coaching on my own after um, about a year of that, which was a little bit, it was definitely different transitioning from working with the uh, with the school and with the team to working on my own. Um, and it was a learning curve because you're kind of going from, you know, this big established system, everything's kind of there for you. There's like this incoming line of, you know, you're shuttling clients in the door. There's an application process to having to find them on your own, which was a very different process. Um, so thankfully, you know, got to connect with a lot of my amazing Instagram followers and um, started working online. But it was really important to me to have a foundation with in-person clients before I started working online. Um, yes, you can start working with online clients before in-person. However, I think that in-person experience really does build a really great foundation. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the beginning of the the coach side, trainer side of me. Any, I can expand on any of more yeah. of that too. So it, it's very true what Charlotte said. You can definitely start online without being in person, but there is a lot that you can learn from being in person because when you're online um, and you don't have that relationship in person, it's very hard to um, get past some pain points and learn some of the process. So I know when I first started training in person, like you said, when I got my degree, I was like, I am hot shit. Mm -hmm. I know everything. And then I started to coach and I kept hitting walls of like, oh, I don't know this. Or how do I fine tune this system? Or how do I explain this in the absolute best way? Because like you said, having a background of different clients, you have to explain it in a different way to make it work for them or whatever allocations you need to make. So I think that's a, a great point to make as far as being able to learn, do tr some trial and error, and then being able to take some of those fine-tuned systems online is a great process. Um, so with that, it's something that I know while you were in school, you had finished up bartending and you had gone into coaching some people and finishing up um, after you graduated. Um, but with that, then you kind of reached out to me. So why don't we go through kind of a little bit of how you found physique development, why you decided to work with a coach and what your experience has been? Because it's something that with working with physique development, we are obviously very proud of the product that we put out within our coaching service. And it was something that once we had met you and gotten a better relationship with you. We knew that you would be a good fit, but it is a two-way street. So I'd love to hear a little bit about what attracted you to PD, what that looked like for you, um, and how it's been growing within PD. Yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned, I started following Sue on Instagram quite a few years ago now. Um, and it's so funny now sitting here with you. I was driving in the 
uh, Louisville today. And I was like, oh, my life has come full circle in so many amazing ways. <laughs> I love um, it. And I'm just so grateful. But yeah, so what really attracted me to, you know, physique development and to you in particular was really just the care, the individualization, the attention to detail. Um, when I hopped on the phone with you, it's actually, it's funny. I was, I found the notes that I took from our initial phone call like the other day. That and I just was, happy. I was smiling. I was flipping through a notebook and it was like Sue Bush initial phone call 11, 14, 2019. I, I was love like, that. Oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, I remember from that, you know, before I even inquired, I could sense the care. And I really, as a coach, my, something that was really important to me was, you know, exercise execution, really being able to be attentive to that side of things. And I knew that you and Alex and Austin and just physique development as a brand, that was a big piece of what was um, very important to you. And as a coach, it was really important to me to also be able to learn from another experienced coach who brought that same level of care, that same level of attention to detail and that same level of just humanity. Um, I think that the physique development coaches, I mean, you know, I think all coaches, all, all good coaches, I should say, <laughs> good, um, good caveat really, there. really care about people and they really are, you know, genuine, loving, amazing human beings. And the physique development coaches are really just the absolute like beacon of that. And any physique development client can attest to that. Um, but that was really a big part of what what really drove me to you guys. And again, yeah, that education piece, really being able to learn from you guys. And that was something we talked about, you know, on our initial phone call was being able to kind of, you know, collaborate in a little bit of a sense, be able to go back and forth and just be able to have a really great relationship where I could learn from you and we could really grow together. Um, and I, I could kind of sense that from, you know, looking through the Instagram, from reading, uh, you know, social media posts, talking to other clients and things like that, that real sense of, you know, wanting to build that solid foundation, that solid relationship with an athlete as an individual and really be able to, you know, help them create that, create success for themselves, um, whatever that means. So that was a big, a big thing of what drove me to you guys. And yeah, just really being able to, you know, grow as a coach under you guys and um, not even really with the intention of joining the staff, but at all, but it, you know, it did work out perfectly. And like I said, I'm just, I'm just grateful. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And you're going to get me all my feels. Uh, yes, but I, I would love to dive into a little bit more what you said about, um, just having a coach and why that was so important mm -hmm. to you. And especially as a coach, I know that's a hard thing when someone does something for a living to hire someone else to do that same thing for them. So, yeah. um, what, where was your head at? Did you feel like it was very hard? to commit to working with someone because you were trying to sell your own coaching service or prove that you knew what you talked about? Because I know starting off, it's a lot of just proving yourself time and time again of trying to show up and show that you know what you're doing and you can bring those results. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and tell me about that? Yeah. So as far as working with a coach and being a coach, yes, this is something where it can very much be a little bit of a mind game. Like, oh, I really like, I should know what I'm doing. I should be able to do this on my own. Like, why can't I do this on my own? I don't need help. And again, I think, you know, some of that can come from a little bit of an ego at the beginning of your journey and not wanting to ask for help. As I mentioned, you know, I worked for the team, so that wasn't necessarily too much of an issue, but you know, there wasn't a little bit of an ego still in the, in the, in my mind kind of telling me not to. Um, but at the end of the day, I knew that there was a little bit of a mental block in my own mind, kind of holding me back from hiring a coach um, where, you know, like if I can't even hire a coach for myself, like why should a client hire me? Um, and I think that there's a really big, I think there's a lot of truth to that. And just having somebody there to help you to help you learn, to help you keep that subjective view on yourself because we can, it's our objective view. It's very hard to, you know, look at yourself and make good decisions because, you know, we have that emotional component to things. We look at ourselves in the mirror and we also want to show up and, you know, present ourselves well. So, you know, I remember when I first inquired to Sue, I was like, oh, is she going to think that I don't know what I'm doing or I don't know what I'm saying or, you know, being afraid that I was going to look silly or something like that. But, you know, again, like with that, like I mentioned with the physique development coaches in general is she at the beginning was like, hey, you're here to learn and I know that. And I think that any, you know, any any good coach will also kind of recognize that within you. But yeah, you know, as a coach, there's definitely something, there's a lot of, a little bit of a mental block there. Um, but once really getting past that mental block for me was actually really what allowed me to really be successful. Um, a lot of that was taking the mental 
energy off of my own plate because when you are no longer, you know, creating your own training programming, worried about creating your own nutrition programming, then you have so much more mental space and mental energy to be able to show up for the rest of the people in your life. And when you are not, you know, constantly frantically concerned about your own, uh, what you are doing, like I said, you can just be so much more giving. So that was a huge piece in and of itself. And then, yeah, like I said, letting like that block that I was talking about, I had a block in my mind where I was like, oh, I can't, I can't do this. And then just giving myself that permission, I think really gave me, yeah, gave me permission to flourish and really let me uh, enter another sort of realm with my confidence in myself. And also just, you know, have, knowing there was somebody in my corner to ask questions to and to be able to learn from and then be able to also apply my own experience to my own clients because then I put myself in my clients' shoes as well. So when now I'm speaking to them, I can speak to them from that experience side too. So there's a lot of pieces that go into that. And I think there's, you know, there's a million reasons that coaches need coaches. I will say that till the day I die. Um, but yeah, that's just one of, one of a few. Yeah. Well, you, I had other follow-up questions, but you answered them all in that just because I wanted to hear about not only the mentorship aspect, which is really great, but we've talked about time and time again, not having to deal with your own stuff yeah. <laughs> because when you're a coach, you're pouring a lot of emotional energy into other people because the absolute best marketing strategy is to care about your clients and to care about someone is a lot of energy. And it's something that at the end of the day, you can be burnt out and then you cannot put yourself first. And so it's something that I've learned within Enneagrams is that um, there's all these great things that you can accomplish in life, but only when you're your healthiest self. Mm -hmm. And if you are constantly putting yourself last and your health last, because you're trying to show up for other people so much, then you're not your healthiest self, you're not able to coach your best. So that's something um, that is extremely important as far as how can I be the healthiest version of myself, not just in what food I eat, but how I talk to myself, how I show up for others, how I allow time for myself, um, and how I can prioritize those different like metrics that you want to put into place. So I love that you talked about all of those things, just talking about like I said, the accountability, being able to have the mentorship, being able to have it off of your plate. And it was something early on that I had expressed to Charlotte, like, hey, I want you to ask questions about your clients, because I would not be the coach I am today without Alex. And Alex answered all of my questions. And it was hard to get into that spot of, they're going to think I'm stupid because I'm asking this question and I quote should already know this, but there's no shoulds here. The only should is that you should always be looking for answers. And if you are open about that and not being in a place where you're too afraid to ask something, because that's a complete disservice to you and your clients to not ask that question or to not find that answer to that question. And that's something that we try to facilitate within the, the team environment for physique development is ask questions. They're not stupid. They're are not silly, like ask them so we can learn and we can keep moving forward. And it's not an ego contest of who looks the smartest. Yeah. It's who can help people and change people's lives. So I love that you saw that in physique development. And I love that you carry that forward within physique development. So another thing you touched on was just talking about execution. And you knew from watching our videos, um, and from watching from the outside, how important that was for us. So what has that looked like since working with us and being able to learn more about execution? Um, and then how that's translated to how you show up and teach that to clients? Yeah, absolutely. So execution, as Sue mentioned, is a huge foundation of what we do at Physique Development, a huge thing that we really believe in. Exercise execution is the foundation to um, progress within your strength training, within your physique, and really within, you know, just a huge foundation of training in general. Um, but something that I, before I started working with Physique Development, um, I've always been someone who really, well, since I started my, you know, strength training side of my fitness journey anyway, I have really aggressively chased strength goals. I have, um, before I started working with Sue, I was chasing some, you know, crazy, crazy hip thrust numbers of like <laughs> 500 pounds or something like that, which is awesome. And I'm still super proud of that. However, the thing that I really learned, you know, over the last year of working with Sue is just because I could move, you know, 500 pounds to hip thrust with the hip thrust doesn't mean that I was necessarily creating actual tension and using the muscles that I was really intending to. So being able to step back, pull all of the weight off the bar in a lot of cases, really, you know, check myself, check my own ego, check my ego at the door, say, hey, see ya, this is not your time. <laughs> um, and giving myself that permission to say, hey, you're not going to feel as quote unquote strong right now. That doesn't mean you are weak. 
That doesn't mean you have lost all of that strength. It just means you are prioritizing this foundational element of your progression and your training. Um, and I knew that I was in a pretty pretty okay spot with, you know, form as a concept, but I knew that I could be a lot better. Um, and so I, you know, from the beginning really had to show myself and give myself that permission to, you know, pull back, pull the weight off of the bar, go back to the beginning with things. And as somebody who had, you know, a couple of years of training experience under my belt, this was really mentally challenging. Um, and, you know, there were points where I was like, I'm working with a coach. Like I should be getting, putting so much weight on the bar, getting so much stronger. And again, this was like our first couple of months together and I was <laughs> still being a little bit egotistical myself. So, uh, and not listening in the, in the, in the way that I always could have been. Um, but what it really, you know, showed me is that that putting that, having that patience and really letting yourself build that foundation is really what's going to be the most important thing for you. It doesn't matter what the weight on the bar is. It doesn't matter if you're adding weight to the bar every week, every month, even every year, if you're not creating good tension, if you're not keeping yourself safe, if you're not executing the movement as it was intended to be executed, because if that is the case, then you're you know, you're just kind of just moving through it. You're going through the motions. You're not getting everything out of it that you really could be doing, not stimulating the fibers to the degree that we could be, not actually creating the intended stimulus of the training phase that you are are in. So you're kind of just going through the motions and not, and kind of shortchanging yourself really is what it is. Um, and that was something that I had to kind of have a hard conversation with myself with and saying, hey, Charlotte, you know, by trying to stay with these old, you know, ways of thinking, you are just shortchanging yourself. And by not pulling the weight off the bar, by not rebuilding your form, you are shortchanging yourself. Um, and having those conversations with myself now made it easier for me not to necessarily have the same conversation with my clients because everybody comes to me in a different place, but also letting them know, like, as we start working together, you know, you're probably going to have to pull weight off the bar as we start working with tempo to make sure you're in a good spot with execution and really being able to explain to them and, you know, relate to them and say, Hey, I went through the exact same process. Like this is where I was and this is where I am now. And the things that I went through in the, in the middle of that, you know, pulling the weight off of the bar, building that patience, really understanding, you know, what good execution feels like for me, finding those movements that work for me, it makes it easier for me to, you know, then empathize with clients who are kind of like, oh, I'm feeling a little bit frustrated with, you know, the weight on the bar not moving or not being quite as high as I may have wanted it to be, or I'm getting a little bit strength or stuck with strength plateaus. So being able to kind of meet them where they are and saying, hey, well, you know, what was your, where, how was your execution with this movement last week? Is your execution better with the same weight? Then we're still making great progress. Or, hey, maybe you didn't, maybe you had to pull weight off of the bar, but again, you know, were you able to feel better mind muscle connection with that exercise? Were you able to feel more secure, more stable, feel like not feel any pain in the movement and being able to mark progress in that way? That was a huge thing for me was those mind muscle connection pieces, you know, being, uh, getting better, feeling more stable within movements, feeling, you know, my whole body just feel better, stronger, all that, those small pieces. And then, at, like I was saying, you know, being able to apply those over to clients and telling them kind of what to expect as they're going through this process and being able to map out those expectations so they know that, hey, you know, you might not necessarily be quite at that same spot right now, but in a couple of months, you'll be right back at that same spot. You'll be executing better. You'll be creating better tension. You'll be making better, more efficient and just safer progress at the end of the day. So that's really, yeah, that's a, a long sort of winded rant about a lot of that execution side of things. And yeah. it's just execution is so important. Yeah. Can that's say it enough. And that's something I love about Charlotte is she is willing to have those hard conversations with herself. She's willing to have them with clients to truly ask what they want. So it's something that we kind of have a, a joke saying here at Physique Development is no soft reps. Um, just because you don't want to go into the mindset of like, I can't do this. It's like, okay, push yourself and do it. Mm -hmm. And it's something that Charlotte's not afraid to tell her clients how it is while still giving them the, the love and support that they need to reach that, but asking those harder questions of, okay, wh where is this at? What is this serving you? And how are we going to move past that? Because she's time and time asked them of herself, even in those harder moments. So absolutely love that. What I want my last question to be, it's going to be a wild card for you. So um, we're going to dive a little bit, not really dive. We're going to, we're going to graze over a, a topic here. And I'd like to ask um, for listeners out there who might be following Instagram swipe workouts. Um, what is your advice on that? And is it beneficial to change up your workout routine that often? 
This is a great question. So I am a retired Instagram <laughs> swipe workout. That should be in your bio. <laughs> I really should be at this point. Um, a retired swipe workout follower, poster, all of the above. This was, you know, kind of how I got into fitness. As I, while I followed Sue at the beginning of my journey, she was not the only person who I followed. <laughs> Maybe that would have been better, but anyway. <laughs> so I started following swipe workouts, and while they certainly serve a purpose, if they get you moving, if they, if you enjoy following them you know, by all means, I'm okay with that. Now, if you really do want to make genuine, consistent, measured physique progress, are swipe workouts going to be the way to do that? My argument is going to be probably not. Um, and switching your workouts up every week or every day in that capacity is ultimately going to be something that's really going to hinder you. And again, you know, if this is something that you really enjoy, by all means, go for it. But when we're really talking about being able to measure progress, being able to actually make consistent progress over time, in addition to that, that's really where we want to kind of leave the swipe workouts or the switching up the workouts every day. We want to leave that behind. And we want to stick to a uh, structured training program to be able to allow adequate progression and to actually allow tracking progress. Because when you are switching up your workouts on a daily or a weekly or a, uh, you know, what have you kind of basis, it can be challenging to track your progression. You might be doing a different, you know, different variations within different exercises. And you're not going to be able to actually, you know, track, are you moving the weight? Are you moving more weight? Are you executing that actual movement better? And being able to actually track that progression over time, um, that you lack consistency in that context as well. And then you can't really, you know, like I was talking about with exercise execution, you can't really build and progress on, you know, specific movements and really perfect those things when you're switching them up all the time. So we also want to give ourselves enough opportunity to practice these movements. So if you're only doing something once in a blue moon, like let's say you're only deadlifting once a month or once every two months and you really want to get better at your deadlift, well, you're probably not going to get better at your deadlift doing it that way. Being able to program it, you know, every week or you know, probably not twice a week, but you know, being able to do that more regularly is what's going to help you, you know, actually build up your execution with that. So anyway, let, swipe workouts absolutely can, you know, they can serve a purpose in some context. Um, another great way to look at them is if you are kind of trying to build your own training program at home, you know, maybe flip through different workouts and getting different ideas for different movements. You, know, you could try those see, and see how they work for you and then be able to write yourself a structured program and be able to utilize those. Uh, but you can still use them for some, in, for, in some inspiration, being able to try some different things, um, being able to you know switch things up here and there. But at the end of the day, I'm going to say, you know, they're probably not going to be your best method of making progress, but you know, they're they serve a purpose and they definitely got me, they got me some traction on Instagram and they, <laughs> they got me from point A to point, we'll say like D on the A to Z. Uh, okay. so they're, uh, they're, they, 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 they serve a purpose in some yeah. context. Yeah. Perfect. Well, then I'm going to finish up with some rapid fire questions for you, put yeah. you on the spot as well. And then we'll tell people where to find you, how to inquire and that that'll be it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what is your favorite summer activity? Summer activity. Hmm. I honestly love sitting outside um, during sunrise in the summer or during sunset. Those are like the coolest the coolest times of the day during the summer. I really hate like really, really hot weather. So in the summer, I really like to capitalize on like the, the early morning hours and the dusk hours. That probably sounds really weird because most people are going to say like going to the pool or going to the beach. And I'm like, let's go watch the sunrise. Watch the sunrise. I love <laughs> it. some cooler weather. <laughs> Well, who is your favorite superhero and why? Oh, man. Um, I'm going to – oh, God. I haven't really even seen enough superhero movies. My boyfriend at home is going to be very upset by me saying that. Um, I'm probably hmm. – we'll go with Spider-Man just because I really like the concept of swinging from buildings from a web. I think that would be really fun and exhilarating. <laughs> if you could pick any flavor of ice cream, what ice cream flavor would you be and why? I'm going to go with cookie dough because it's my favorite and because it's simple, but you also have a lot of nice surprises in there. You know what? You kind of know what you're going to get, but like you also, it's still a little bit unexpected in the same context. I love and how you're really trying wholesome. to make this deep here. Uh, <laughs> uh, are you a morning or a night person? Morning for sure. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite movie quote? Or TV show mm, quote. I should, but I don't. All I, right. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I should have an, like an office quote lined up, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not good at quotes. I really. I wish I was. That's not my skill. <laughs> um, what is your 
favorite book that you've read recently? Oh man, I read uh, over the summer. I read all the light that cannot, all the light I cannot see, all the light we cannot see. Oh, I'll man. link it in the show notes. It's a fantastic book. I it was just beautiful, beautifully written. It was a really interesting story. I it was a little bit sad, but it was a beautiful story. So and we'll end story. with when you dance. What do you look like? I, I look like one of those little like balloon inflatable things <laughs> when you, uh, like outside of car. If lots. someone asks if I'm okay is really how you know yeah. I'm dancing. And I'm usually probably the one that's like, I don't know, going to be hanging around like on the outskirts, like looking like the balloon inflatable. <laughs> That'll be that. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much for being on, Charlotte. We look forward to clients being able to interact and work with you. Um, if you are interested in working with a Charlotte or any of the PD coaches, we will leave the inquiry link in the show notes. Um, but before we jump off, Charlotte, why don't you tell people where they can find you? Yeah, absolutely. So as Sue mentioned, the Seek Development Instagram is a good starting point. But after that, my personal Instagram page is cmjones.fit. Um, you can shoot me an email as well, charlotte at physiquedevelopment.com. If you're an email type of person, I'm great with email. Um, but yeah, that is generally Instagram. That's probably my uh, main point of contact. Well, perfect. Anyone who wants to inquire with Charlotte, I've, I've talked enough about how awesome she is, but go ahead and inquire via the link in the show notes or in the Physique Development Instagram bio, um, and you'll be seeing a lot more of Charlotte, her content, her posts, um, and really being able to see what a great coach she is, how much she cares for her clients, um, and the, the sky's the limit for her. Like I said, she's going to ask the hard questions of herself. She's going to push herself, um, and she's going to ask questions uh, to make sure that she's continuing to learn, which is something that I very much so admire about her uh, because it's very easy to get complacent in your knowledge. So check out Charlotte. Thanks for tuning in to the Physique Development Podcast and we'll catch you next time.